you know, for all the uh, obstacles and all of the different uh, things that we've come, uh, had come against us, there must be some great, great revelation coming our way because somebody's not happy, right? But it's okay. The worship was amazing. Some of those words are just so, so inspiring, so full of anointing, so full of, of, of power because they, they empower us to, to draw closer to the Lord. They empower us to believe in a, a great and an awesome and a good God, a good Father. And they also inspire us and motivate us to believe that we, too, are great because we are His, because we have been chosen by Him, right? And we all know that, you know, He only does good things. He's a good, good Father. Many, many years ago, I had, um, I used to listen a lot, um, a lot. I'm on my way from work, I'm on my way to work, I'm on my way here, there, in my car, to uh, fire, Firefighters for Christ ministry tapes. And this is the ministry, and I'm pretty certain it's still around, but they had some amazing stuff out there. I, I grew so much with those tapes. They were everything from worship to uh comedy to testimonies to in-depth uh, study of the word and um, but I especially used to be drawn to the testimonies of the different uh, uh, speakers one of them was this gentleman and I remember very well because it stayed with me he had survived a plane crash and he tells his story of how when the plane uh, hit the ground, fire was all around him, and he looked all around, and all he could see is bodies and blood and fire, and, you know, just, it, it was an awful, awful thing. But the one thing that stu stood, uh, stood with him, the one thing that he remembered at that time was what his mom um, and his parents or his family used to tell him constantly. And they used to constantly remind him that he was protected, that no matter where he would go, that he, he would always have angels watching over him, that he never had to fear because he was one of God's chosen children. And this is stuff that he, learned, he heard over and over and over again as a child. And as he grew older, you know, he went to college and he said he just put all of that away. He never picked up his Bible again, never went to church. He thought that was just something you do when you're a small kid and you're, or when you're an old person because there's nothing else to do. But ironically, when the hit, when the train, sorry, when the plane hit the ground and there was death and torment and screaming and shouting and just explosions, the one thing that came back to his mind were these words, and this is what he was reading from. It was Psalms 43. I'm sorry, Isaiah 43. And I'm going to not give you the whole thing, just a portion of it, but it says here, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And those were the words, that was the one sentence, that was the one stream of words that just hit him, like just went into the depths of his soul. And he recalled, the fire shall not, you will not be burned, and nor, the, nor shall the flame scorch you, nor shall the flame scorch you, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And then again it says in uh, verse 4, Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. You know, when my daughter came to visit uh, this last month, I it's very hard to, you know, kind of, uh, shepherd them in to the circle and sit them down and have them just stand still because there's you know there's they have so much 
so much energy in them. They want to see everybody that they left behind. They want to go visit everywhere. They want to go and taste everything. And they're just going 100 miles an hour. But I needed to make sure that at the right time, when it was quiet, when there was no other noises, when there was no other people around, that I could get them in front of my face and start ministering to them. And then things like, like these words came to me. Isaiah 49, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. I will preserve you, and I will give you as a covenant to the people to restore the earth, to cause them to inherit the desolate places, that you may say to the prisoners, go forth, and to those that are in darkness, show yourself. They shall neither hunger nor thirst, neither shall heat nor sun strike them. And it says, because he who has mercy on them will lead them. And then on to verse 13. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, in, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted. On the way back, when I was taking Danielle back to the airport, two things happened. And gosh, I wish I could say that they were not my fault. One of them was definitely my fault. The other one was not. A car had uh, put his uh, uh, put his put the front end of his car into another lane as if to get in. Now, this car was behind me. First, uh, he was going to the other lane, and then he changed his mind, and he's going to another. He like he did not know where he was going, and this is a little frustrating for those of us that do know where we're going and do need a place to get to. But what this car did is I I did not realize this. A car in front of me had backed up because um, he had over you know gotten over the, the lines uh, at the light signal. So then I started to back up because I didn't want to get hurt in the back, I mean in the front, right? And at that time, Good morning. Good morning. at that time, Danielle said, oh my gosh, mom, did you not see that? And I'm like, what? She said, mom, you almost got hit. That car turned in as soon as you backed up. He just missed you by, in by inches. I had no idea, but that's cool because I know that wherever we go, we are being protected and that there's nothing that's going to be able to hurt us, right? Now, the other thing that happened was we were behind traffic and I was listen, looking at the cars in front of me and looking at the lights. I did not realize that I was in a lane that could only go one way as opposed to the lane that was next to me that could go both ways. And needless to say, I went with the cars, the lights, that was going to straight ahead instead of the lights that were going to the to turn. So definitely, I made a turn on a red light, and all I could. And I'm in the middle. I mean, I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, "Oh my God, there is, you know, what twenty lanes in this intersection? Any one of these cars could come in and hurt me, hit us." But nothing happened. But again, protected and not even aware, watched over it and not even. Not even really thinking about it because wherever we go, there he is, right? Protection is all around us. But not just that. What about those people that do sometimes come in and try to uh, to to do things to harm you? There, you don't know, and I don't know. So many times that we have been protected. So many times that people have even tried to come in against us. And after the fact, you hear, "Oh, did you not hear so and so was saying this about you?" And it doesn't really matter because it. It's not up to us. We're being watched over, we're being protected, and we're being guarded. Isaiah 49, it says, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. Verse 11, And the prey of the terrible will be, de will be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. So you ask, why do I keep reminding my kids of these things? Why do I keep telling them that they are protected? Why do I keep telling them that there's that they have been called and chosen and anointed and set apart? I'll tell you why. Go to Proverbs 16 in verse 10. Divination is in the lips of the king. His mouth must not transgress in judgment. 
And this is what I get out of this. I proclaim victory. I proclaim salvation. I proclaim good things for my family. I proclaim health. I proclaim favor and abundance. Why? Because we have been called, we have been chosen as priests and kings. And as priests and kings, we have divination in our mouth and in our tongue. And we can profess and we can proclaim and we can even declare the good things that are coming. And those things will come because it has been gifted to us from the Lord above to do those things, to say these things, to proclaim these things because once we proclaim them, we as kings, we as priests have the gift of prophecy to prophesy good things for our children. So prophesy good, prophesy great, prophesy favored, health, abundance, safety, security, because not only are you putting it in their heart and you never know when they come, will come back, one thing that will happen for sure is that you are creating a great, great future for your, yourself, your family, your children, and those that you are believing for. Prophesy. Be a great prophet. Be a great king. Be a great servant. Be a great ambassador to the one who sent you. Amen. God bless. Amen. Well, you know. Uh, this uh, week and last week, you, you all know that uh, I just um, we just finished the course in uh, uh, in Paula, California, the uh, half marathon. Most people may think that um, half marathon is is really nothing, you know, to brag about or whatever. And I'm not really bragging, but um, I do want to um, just just for a second. It's kind of on my heart that um, I see, uh, you know. <laughs> You know, the, the, the one thing that I want to say is that the message is called hundredfold. And uh, we know where, where Jesus uh, gives the parable of the thirtyfold, the sixtyfold, and the, and, the, and the hundredfold. And the Lord gave me a fresh revelation of the hundredfold. And, um, and, 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 he, and he said, you know, this is the reason why you, you uh, entered into this, uh, this uh, 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 SoCal Spartan Beast course. Um, was the very reason it, it, it was uh, it was tougher than your um, average uh, just a basic half marathon it was uh, above and beyond that and and I knew that it was going to and it even scared me and I just want to just touch a little bit on this and the very reason why I did this um, is because I believe that the Lord really 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 wants us to get to the place where we are, we are 100-fold. Um, I, I look around myself, Lori, uh, people at work, people at the uh, supermarket, people at the, uh, um, at the park, and, and people wherever I go, I, I look around, even in cars, and I look around and I see people and I think, you know, um, I know that the Lord has called his uh, His his inhabitants, every single man and woman on the earth, he's called them to be champions. And the, the thing is, is that, that he calls us to be champions. And the very reason he wants us to be champions is because that's where we thrive. That's, I'm going to say it again, that's where our body completely thrives in life. I mean, it, 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 it takes its place where it was meant to be. The strongest it, it can be when when you are when you are your body is the strongest it can be when your mind is the strongest it can be when your eyes are the strongest it can be when, when every part of you uh, in your life it is the strongest it can be you you have reached what what he calls sozo which is salvation the word for salvation um, it means the ultimate of of how highest you can be in this life form. And yes, the next life form is even greater. But but this life form, he de he so desires it. And what happens is is that he he lets you become that champion. He trains you for it. He he gives you success in it. And then all of a sudden, you become it. And then you realize. 
that it's in an intimate relationship that he gets to enjoy that that glory that you get on the earth. So I believe that that was our destiny to begin with. Um, it took Lori and I a long time to get here, and we just we just we're thankful that we did. And we know that more are coming, many, many more are coming into uh, understanding and a revelation of this hundredfold that God had desired for us. And I just wanted to um, just speak about it just for a, a little bit. And I know the Lord has a lot of things that he wants to say. But um, remember, uh, the Lord was here um, he, he, he did something that was so precious, uh, and, and it has to do with giving his life so that we would have life. He knew that he, and he alone, could take the sins of the world and pay the penalty. We serve today, we live today in harmony with a holy God, a God who, the sin that, we would have to pay for he that's not his thing it's it, it isn't his thing it isn't his style and therefore he washed us with his own precious blood so that that would not be a, 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 a something on our on our plate anymore and <clears throat> take you into a true story you know um, me and Lori we feel that the reason why we come here every uh, week is that we are so free. I mean, we have gotten almost to a hundredfold, literally. I mean, it, it's almost like 99.9.9%. And we're not there yet, but it's amazing. And we, we just want to share it with other people that it's possible, that you can obtain it. It's the very reason why I went into the Spartan Beast race, <clears throat> is that you can see that... Um, even at 50, almost 52, um, we're not, we're not getting, we're not getting weaker. We're literally getting stronger. When I, when I trained for this beast course, I became stronger than I've ever become. And it's amazing because I mean, literally my, my inner core is so strong. It's funny. Lori, uh, has me moving things and she, she just laughs. She just goes, Wow, man, you are strong. And, and I amaze myself. And it's just like, it's like, this is what God wants to do for those who, who uh, will, will believe that his intentions are completely good. And a hundredfold is what he has on his mind for us today. And I start in Mark 2, 9. And <clears throat> comes to a time where Jesus is, 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 is approached in a circumstance that has a paralyzed man in front of him. And, 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 and he asks the crowd, he says, which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. Now, I like the fact, let's, let's, let's focus on something. Did the man ever ask for forgiveness? He didn't even have, his mind wasn't even thinking about whether he sinned or he didn't sin. You know, the world today, they, you know, I'm talking about the world, the, the, the person that is not a Christian, that is not saved by the blood of Jesus yet, but that time is coming. But because I'm here on the earth, I'm going to tell as many people as I can get my mouth to talk to. But the point is that this man is just, he is a very good example of this entire world. They are paralyzed. They don't even know it. They are, they, they have their sin on their lives because only the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from any sin. But they don't even know it. They don't even care. But I'm telling you, it's very simple. God is a good, he has a mindset to save you and I. And all he can think is send himself and die a, a paymental payment that could be true and true for each and every one of us and knock that stuff out. And then we can walk shamelessly before him and enjoyably before him and him enjoying us walking and enjoying him. But I want to tell you folks, don't show the world 
the wrong way of showing the Father, the wrong way of showing Jesus, the wrong way of showing the Holy Spirit. No one's trying to hit anybody over the head. I want you to see that it's okay to mention which is easier. And he says, this is easier for him to make the man a hundredfold healed. You, my friend, he is reaching out to you this morning by my voice, by Lori's voice, and saying to you, which is easier to forgive your sin or to make you as you are paralyzed by that fear or you're paralyzed by, by whatever that hundredfold you haven't gotten a hold of, which is easier to remove that from your life or to forgive you from your sins? And I'll tell you, the harder one is to forgive you from, from your sins. He had to take just the time out of his life and he had to, he had to come here on the earth and do what he did in order to heal you of your, para, your, your, your paralytic, whatever it is, in order to do that, he had to do the greater. I just want to just share that with you this morning. And now I give you the, the, the benedict. The benediction is in Philippians 4, 8, 9. Finally, believers, keep your heart meditating on whatever is true, like scriptures that God loves us, is for us to the extreme of making the greatest sacrifice to cleanse us through his son. Whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever brings courage and loving kindness. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things, center your mind on them and the, and implant them in your heart. The things which God, which you have learned and received and heard and believed that God is for you and extremely loves you to the point of paying your death debt so you could live enjoyably, relaxed in his presence without fear or worry. Practice these things in daily life and the God who is the source of peace and well-being, you will always feel ever so presently that he is with you and for you. Well, my friends, like I say, like we say every week, though Lori and I, we leave you, you know the Lord never leaves you. Act like it and drink from his goodness 24-7. Enjoy your, your life.